It's been said that democracy is in decline throughout the world, that the golden age of liberal, capitalist, representative republics spearheaded by the US's commitment to a free world may be coming to an end. I don't necessarily think all of this is false, but op-eds, editorial pages, and news magazines seem to constantly ramble and rant on how authoritarianism is on the rise, how strong men are taking over free governments, how dictatorship will inevitably win against democracy. Again, I don't necessarily think all of this is false, but I do believe it to be very misleading. And sure, you can call someone like Recep Tayyip Erdogan, Vladimir Putin, or Viktor Orban strong men ruling over countries previously thought to be bastions of modern capitalist democracies. But calling these men the problem, the, the catalyst, I don't believe it to be the case. In fact, it's possible that this tendency in the West may not be caused by a hatred of democratic norms, but a yearning for true democracy. It's a desire to rebuke the establishment that causes citizens to question norms, values, and their very definitions of truth. It's a phenomenon that exists in the US as well. For example, and please, please bear with me, but let's talk a little bit about the 2016 election. I know, I hate to bring it up just as much as many of you, but there are some lessons to be learned here. Donald Trump campaigned almost solely on being an outsider. Whatever you think of him, and I know that there are plenty of thoughts to be had about him, it's clear that his campaign style, if not his presidency, has been divisive, energetic, infuriating, charismatic. Trump was the anti-establishment. And, like and like it or not, it has made him just as many friends as enemies. For every left-leaning article calling Donald Trump a monster, destroying his country and the liberals, there still exists a white, blue-collar worker in Michigan whose vote, along with just 50,000 others, less than a 0.5% margin, flipped the state with the rest of the Rust Belt after being reliably democratic for the past two and a half decades. To that worker in Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, that left-leaning article is a welcome hatred. It's a representation and a reminder that Trump is against the establishment forces that have pushed this country, at least since the Clinton era, if not before. And by deductive reasoning, a reminder that Trump is for them, for the common man. And of course, there's Hillary Clinton now, Whatever you think of her, you have to admit that she is polarizing, but for the exact opposite reason. She is the establishment. She is the ultimate insider with decades of public and personal and political experience, yet little charisma or connection to the average American or other problems. And let's be real, that worker who loves Trump for the liberal media's hatred of him would almost certainly notice the tilt in most mainstream audiences, not towards Clinton, at least against Trump. And despite everything, despite the polling, despite the pollsters, despite the media, Donald Trump went on to become the first ever US president with no prior government experience. If this is no true measure of the people's desire to rebuke the establishment, then what is? Now, I don't think that any of this should be misconstrued, that democracy itself is on a decline in terms of popularity. Polls show that democracy, that is to say both representative and direct democracy, is still the most appreciated and most respected form of government worldwide. But that's just it. What's a democracy for people to respect if it doesn't respect what it's designed to do? The will of a people. Polls also show that people believe their voice does not matter in their democratic systems currently, and that, democratic, and that democracy as a, as a form of government is falling in importance to daily life. I think it's democracy that is in Dictatorship. At this reason, especially in a Western country like the US, we're often able to ways we can connect with our representatives efficiently. For example, we can DM our state representatives on Twitter, email our Congress members, maybe give a call to our senators, or if we're really ambitious, we can even handwrite a letter to our governors. No. These messages, while certainly well intentioned, do not travel into the hands of the actual representative you're trying to reach unless a PR shoot is coincidentally occurring the same day. There are over 600,000 people per congressional district in the US. So think that they have the ability, energy, capability to listen to all of your concerns is frankly futile. Not to mention, while plenty of politicians love to ramp about fighting for you and your need, studies have shown that the actual opinion of a public when compared to the opinion of special interest owners Statistically speaking, literally does not matter whatsoever. 
Even still, while I personally love the efforts that different organizations have put to elect better politicians, make it easier to contact politicians, create a platform to get petitions signed, I don't believe it to be the root cause of our current issue with democracy. The biggest issue with democracy is not the politicians, it's not left, right, centrist or extreme or anything similar, it's the system and the disconnection between so -called, the so-called establishment or elites and the general public. Those strong men mentioned earlier, Putin, Assad, Xi Jinping, they all in some way have presented themselves as fighters for the common man against the establishment. Some have democratically entered power and others haven't, but it's becoming abundantly clear that something needs to be done about the current democratic structures in place before more unrest takes hold and democracy itself begin to truly crumble worldwide. It isn't much currently, but there are those working on solutions. Some focus on campaign finance reform, like enacting constitutional amendments to abolish corporate personhood and limit campaign spending. Some focus on better connections between politicians and constituents, not just through emails and texts, but through actual direct communication on how constituents feel about specific issues and pieces of legislation. And some, such as the startup I volunteer for, Liquid US, are using blockchain technology, the technology behind Bitcoin, to make voting more secure and more responsive so that everyone can participate every day in democracy. What sets these efforts apart from others is their scope and their focus. It's not about the policies, and it's not about the politician. It's about the structure. For example, for a country such as Venezuela, which, no matter what you think of the current situation politically, is going through a period of immense turmoil right now. The idea that the people and not elites should be put in charge resonates. A blockchain democracy foundation based in San Francisco, with a hub in Caracas, along with many other places around the world, they're currently working on solutions to give everyday Venezuelans a secure say in their future and take power away from those who usurp it from their own benefit. Telling a working class Venezuelan to call their diputado is, in this case, probably not the best option for stable, long-term governance. Neither should it be in the U.S. or anywhere else where there exists any fragility in a democratic process. There, the only true way to fix systems is through systemic change. There are plenty of divisions to be had between the left and the right and everything in between, but to fix democracy and stop tyranny, we need to fix the biggest division of all, that between citizens and their government. Only when this rift can be solved is when citizens can have a republic that they can be proud to live in, and one where their voice truly matters. The biggest divide in the West and everywhere else right now is not between socialism and capitalism, not between free markets and governments, not even between democracy and dictatorship. It's between the establishment and the people. And if democracy must win, then the people must win. Thank you.